Hello. <laughs> Welcome to Double Header Friday. How you guys doing? See the chats flying around? A lot of people in there. It's going to be an awesome, awesome show. Uh, let me get started. As Sean said, very early, Sean, by the way, let's get these potties started. Uh, just let me do a couple announcements and uh, we'll be underway. Great show today, but I got something coming Monday too. Very excited about. But double header Friday. What does that mean for you newbie, newbies that are here? Uh, Friday, I do off the cuff at noon, then at uh, six o'clock Eastern on my Rumble channel, Delara O'Brien, The Gathering. I have to put it over there because it's no holds barred. You know what I mean? We really go at it. It's Fab Four. Uh, tonight, Dennis will be joining us as well. And it's called Have We Met Our Goliath? So you don't want to miss that. Um, if you uh, subscribe to our website, what will happen is a little thing will pop up. You subscribe and then um, we let you know. We send you a link that you can get right on there. So that's a good thing to do as well. Anyway, see you guys at six. Uh, Sunday night. The Gathering at Solomon's Porch, that's our online church service. That's on Rumble as well, same thing. Um, we were on YouTube. We got all kinds of strikes uh, because when we pray, what am I going to do? We got to not pray. <laughs> God leads you and you say, oh, can't say that, God. So what we had to do was we had to get off of YouTube. So we're our online church service on Sunday night, 6 o'clock Eastern, is only on Rumble if you did not see Wednesdays off the cuff, uh, you need to go back and watch that because it's not going to be the same thing, but we're doing a kind of a continuation of that on Sunday night. Okay. Awesome. Last but not least, joincountry.com helps us do the gatherings. If you don't know what the gatherings are, where you been, go here. It explains it all. Um, First, and Jenna, so she, Jenna wrote this all out for me so you guys understand. So I'm just a woman under orders. Uh, this, you guys saw, very stretchy. Um, I'm wearing this again because people asked, actually wrote and asked for me to wear it again. So here it is. It's called Born to be Wild. Top. And then this is new. Look how beautiful this is. This is a spring cardigan. Uh, day to night, cozy cardigan. It is soft like butter. Um, this comes in two other styles. Uh, this is just in this beautiful, beautiful heathered gray. And last but not least um, is the our, in, our famous uh, Psalm 91 necklace. It's got the little Psalm 91 scripture reference and uh, the angel wing and a beautiful little jewel. It uh, comes in silver and gold. I have the silver on. I wear the gold too. But um, if you want this, this is like super, 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 super duper popular. Go over and get it. Um, let's see what else. What did she say? Okay, this, yeah. This is very stretchy, stretchy, stretchy. You can size down. This as well, you can size down. I'm like a small or medium. I got a small in this uh, because it. I knew it, you know, the way I wanted it to fit. So you can get either one. So if you're like a, an XL, go to L. If you're a 2X, go to XL, blah, blah, blah. Okay, where are these things? She said they are in the description below this video. That's the, the easiest place to access them. Also, you can go to joyandcountry.com. Go to Dolores Closet. Yes, my closet has all that stuff in it. I'm like pushing Dennis out of his. I've taken over this spare room closets. Yeah, it's like, I, you know, I need to wear this stuff. So she has to get one for me. It's very funny, very funny. But hey, I'm loving it, baby. Um, and so there's that. Also, Trey Importante. There's a Mother's Day sale going on until Sunday night, uh, midnight, okay? You can get up to 20% off your order. Plus, we have a Mother's Day collection that you're going to get some great gift ideas. You find it in the top menu on the website. She says, we, Jenna said, we also add a lot of new and clearance items to be in uh, is it inventory up to 65% off on sale and clearance items. Mother's Day weekend sale discount codes also work on sale items, guys. 
Yo, yo, yo. Don't forget that. So you're getting double discounts. You can get like up to 75, 80% off. But go take a peek at these two. These are gorgeous, gorgeous. And of course, don't forget the necklace. Oh, oh, she, oh, what a cute thing she put at the end. She said, always don't forget free U.S. shipping, um, which I call Jenison. And then she put, she's so sweet. Jenna says she loves you all and thanks you for your support. Oh, you're so sweet, Jenna. I didn't see you said that. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, here we go. Um, you know me. I'm a critical thinker. I think outside the box. I always want, I don't stop. Uh, I just kind of dig and dig and dig and dig. I, 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 tor I torment Dennis. Poor Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Dennis. Dennis needs, I'm going to buy him a big medal one of these days because he sits and he listens and he listens. I'm like, Dennis, well, you're done. And Dennis, blah, blah, blah. And, and he's just, it's just very funny. Uh, poor guy. Uh, but he's wonderful. He's amazing. Loves me. I love him. But I do give him, as my mom used to say, a tin ear. Remember that saying? Give somebody a tin ear. I don't know what it means, but it's there. So, Let's talk about the Georgia Guidestones. This is something that's been covered by uh, a lot of people. When it happened, everybody was covering it. Um, uh, but it's not really the first of its kind. They call they call Georgia Guidestones or called it um, the American Stonehenge. Stonehenge. Uh, let me let me show you this, guys. This was located in, uh, as you can see, it's very similar. Uh, this was located in, um, is located to this day in, in uh, Wiltshire, England. It's said to be about 5,000 years old, give or take a thousand years, I guess. Um, no one knows the exact, uh, the exact reason for these stones, uh, why they were arranged in a specific manner, but it was created. And what's interesting is that it aligns perfectly with the summer solstice, sunrise, and the winter solstice, which is sunset. Okay, so you got to keep that in mind, all right, as we move forward. So we've got the um, uh, Georgia Guidestones that were erected on March 22nd, 1980. The builder is still anonymous, but it actually isn't really anonymous, but no one really knows who he is. So let me just tell you this story. Um, but it being anonymous makes me think there's some kind of government or state or both federal connection. Uh, it contains six granite slab slabs. They were uh, 19 in change high, almost 20 feet high. Uh, together, they weighed um, nearly a quarter of a million pounds, 237,000 pounds. Now, they, like Stonehenge, they incorporated subjects of archaeoastronomy. That's the practice of uh, aligning buildings with celestial bodies, okay? So what, what was it exactly um, that it said on the stones? We all know this. Maybe, maybe some. There's a lot of people that are writing to me saying people are watching me that normally wouldn't watch someone like me. Um, and so for those of you that don't know what was written on the Georgia Guidestones, let me go through it. Number one, I'm going to go back to number one in a minute. So I'm not going to say number one. Let me just wait on that. Number two, uh, rule passion, faith. This is what's carved in, okay? Was carved in the um, guide stones. And I'll tell you the languages in a minute. But it was carved in. And uh, number two was rule, passion, faith, tradition, and all things tempered with reason. Number three, protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. I don't know. So far, they sound pretty good to me, no? Number four, let all nations rule internally, revol resolving external disputes in a world court. Okay, here we go. Now we're starting to veer. 
Five, avoid petty laws and useless officials. Wonderful. Six, balance personal rights with social duties. Here we go. Veering, taking freedom. Seven, prize truth, prize beauty and love, seeking harmony with the infinite. Eight, be not a cancer on the earth. Leave room for nature. Leave room for nature. Okay, now number one, let's look at, at this. Maintain humanity under 500,000 people in perpetual balance with nature. So let's put this in perspective. There are right now over 8 billion people in the world. That means that seven and a half people, innocent people, would have to be eliminated by some means. But most intriguing to me is this. The state, the government of Georgia demolished the rest of them, but only one was destroyed. They said for safety reasons, so they couldn't remove just the dangerous part and leave the rest? This is a big question mark to me, okay? Now I'm gonna move on, but remember that thought. So who created them and who destroyed them? So let's go back to the year 1979. A man named R.C. Christian, an elegant gray-haired man walked in to the Albertson, Georgia, granite finishing company to speak to the owner and the president of the company then joe fenley he introduced himself as a small group of loyal americans he was representing they all wished to commission him on doing a remarkable mo monument a monument that would serve humanity it would be erected in the united states and he told Fenley, it would be salvation to future generations. So why did they want the granite from this company? So you're saying, who was Fenley? Guys, really, just a, a guy that owns a company that had great granite, okay? And he happened to be in Georgia. So R.C. Christian told Fenley that he heard their granite was the best in the world. So he, com he continued by telling Fenley that this group, who wanted to remain anonymous had been planning this for over 20 years. And with the events happening as they are now, which was then 1979, and what will come in the future, it will guide people in a post-apocalyptic society. So basically, according to uh, R.C. Christian, it was a survival tool for those who remained and a set of moral instructions for the survival after the apocalypse. Christian told Fenley it had to be strong enough to withstand any catastrophic event. <laughs> I think that's pretty funny. I think it, that's just a little humor on my own side, but one mom blew it up. Uh, anyway, anyway, Fenley agreed to the job, but he knew it was quite a task, thinking Christian was some kind of a nut job. <laughs> Came in here and said, I've got the answer. After the apocalypse, this is what we're gonna do. And I represent a bunch of people. So uh, he told him, he gave, Fenley gave him a price three times higher than anyone else would have, would have uh, charged. And he said to him, he gave him the price thinking the guy's going to walk out the door. And he didn't. He's without batting an eye, Christian, uh, R.C. Christian agreed. It was twice as high as the slabs at Stonehenge, over 250,000 pounds of granite, but Fenley would make millions. So he agreed. Then R.C. Christian soon met with the Granite City Bank president, okay, of Alberton, in Alberton, Georgia, Wyatt Martin. He knew through Fenley that he would keep, he had to keep his name and credentials in confidence. So the banker, Wyatt Martin, explained that he could not proceed unless he could verify the man's true identity and get some assurance that you are going to pay for this thing. I mean, you gave 10,000 down, but this thing's going to cost millions. So you better pony up a little bit more and show me how you're going to pay. 
Eventually, the two negotiated an agreement. Christian would reveal his real name, but Martin had to sign his life away just about. He's the sole intermediary, signed a confidentiality agreement, never to disclose the information to another living soul and to agree to destroy all documents related to the project when it's finished. They both signed, actually all three of them signed, and that was that. After the land in Elberton, Georgia, it was 10 acres of land, was procured, Christian said goodbye to the men and told them they would never see him again, and they didn't. After the project was finished, all documentation must be destroyed. That's what he said when he walked out the door. Okay. To this day, Wyatt is now about, that's the bank, banker, is now 90 years old. He's the only person who knows the true identity of Mr. R.C. Christian. Interesting pseudonym, don't you think? I'll explain that more later. Because Fenley passed away in 1981. So a year after he made it, Fenley passed away, which is a little interesting to me. He was still a fairly young guy and and uh, it, it finished and then, uh, you know, then he, uh, he, 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 he passed away. Um, so people, this was actually in, on 10, 10 acres where there were houses along one side of this open area. Okay. And neighbors, many neighbors um, said on certain nights, they would hear chanting coming from the construction site. And according to those neighbors surrounding the guidestones, uh, they it, they felt like it was a coven of witches that adopted the site. They would encircle it with their hands and uh, regularly uh, beheaded chickens. Um, people watched this with binoculars and different things. Obviously, they picked up everything and they were gone. They did find some blood on the site. Nobody ever checked it to see if it was chicken blood or whatever. Um, but on March 22nd, 1980, this monument was dedicated. Before Martin the Banker died in December of 2021, he told reporters that R.C. Christian had unfortunately passed away a few years back. So around 2018, 2017, 18, R.C. Christian is no more. Okay. Now, in the front, uh, let me go through, hold on a second. I missed some stuff. All right. I'm going to go, I'll do it this way. Um, in the front. Okay. Let me get, let me get this so I can see it in the front of this, uh, is this. Okay. Uh, astronomic features channel, uh, uh channels through stone indicates celestial a pole or a horizontal slot indicates annual travel to the sun. This is all so interesting. I'm going to explain later. Sunbeam through capstone marks new time throughout the year. Author R.C. Christian, pseudonym. Sponsors, a small group of Americans who seek the age of reason. Time capsule, placed six feet below this spot on blank. Doesn't say. To be opened on blank. Nothing. Okay. Now, apparently... Let's just stop right there for one minute. Um, when they dug up after the monument was destroyed and they dug it up, there was no ca a time capsule. There was no hole. Nothing was disturbed underneath. Um, or so they said. I mean, would they really tell us? Probably not. But um, they said that there was nothing there. And and there was no dates or anything on it. Uh, it's very it's very bizarre. It's, a, it's just a... One of those things that you just have to consider all possibilities, but nothing is for sure. And the one man that could have answered it is gone. And and the other one, there's two gone now, one left, and you can't even find them. So let's go on. Who was R.C. Christian and what secret group did he represent? So there are theories behind the Guidestones, okay? There's three theories. I tend to believe this first one. But I'll tell you the other two. You make up your own mind. You decide for yourself which one you believe. And that's your own critical thinking, your own, um, you know, putting together information maybe that you have. So there are three theories. And here it is, the first one. Jay Widener 
um, and he exists. Okay, I checked him out. A former Seattle radio commentator spent years investigating uh, the Guidestones and what was behind them. He says that Christian and his associates were Rosicrucians. I hope I'm saying that right. Rosicrucians, okay? Followers of the Order of the Rosy Cross. Um, it's a secret society of mystics that originated in late medieval Germany. They claim understanding of esoteric truths in the universe unlike anyone else anywhere in the world. Widener considered uh, the name R.C. Christian an homage to the order's founder, a man identified as Freider R.C., and later known as Christian Rosencrantz. Um, secrecy, uh, the Rosicrucians, that is big, like most secret groups. Uh, the teachings are a combination of occultism, other religious beliefs, including Hermeticism, Jewish mysticism, Christian Gnosticism. But the central feature of the Rosicrucianism is the belief that only its members present, uh, possess the secret weapon, wisdom, that was handed down to them from ancient times. Uh, they believed that Jesus was a God, similar to Jehovah's Witnesses who believed the same thing, that Jesus was a God, okay? Uh, according to uh, G Jesus Christ, according to them, he was born of Gentile parents, did not die on the cross, did not ascend to heaven and retire to the monastery in Carmel to carry on secret missions with his apostles. <laughs> Two, salvation. They deny that a person must trust Christ as the only savior. Their system is one. Self-effort, their motto being try, then you can earn salvation and you can be like a God, just like Jesus. The Bible, they reject that there's any divine inspiration and they hold it as a bunch of jumble. That makes no sense. Obviously, if you are not enlightened and to see it and you read it, because I remember before I was saved, I opened up the Bible. I'm like, what does this say? You don't, you can't understand it. I think we forget that sometimes. We're so down this road that we forget what we were like before. So let me give you just a little other information. Thomas Paine, you know, there's a lot of people that, were uh, uh, Raza, uh, uh, Ras Cruzians, okay? Look it up yourself. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but Thomas Paine sticks out to me, and I'll tell you why. He wrote The Art of Reason, and um, I, I looked up The Art of Reason, and it didn't say much, but I really enjoyed this. You go on Amazon, you can find all this, uh, this um, uh, uh, review. And this is what someone said. Thomas Paine was a deist, as were many of our country's founders. Paine aptly refutes the Bible, its revelations, and concept of a trinity. He points out the absurdities and what he considers to be insults to God that are in the Bible. The three volumes uh, progress one to another, although he used the language of his day. Paine expresses himself so well that the meaning is not lost. Uh, the, you know, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so um, he says, I found myself wishing pain were alive today to debate today's fundamentalists. Okay, so then then uh, if you go on, uh, go further, there's a book called um, Rosicrucian America, How a Secret Society uh, Influenced the Destiny of a Nation. I'm going to get this book, okay, by Stephen Sora. I just got to read a few pages in and see if it, intrigues me and if he's going down the right road. But this is one of the paragraphs he said. Now, remember, this is the person that is the one that ordered the Guidestones, okay? He was a Rosicrucian. This is what Sorrow says, this author. Sorrow looks at Rosicrucian influences on the founding fathers and earliest settlers of America, such as Washington, Franklin, and William Penn, of Pennsylvania and on the American Revolution, not American colonies such as Williamsburg Colony. He details how Penn invited the Rosicrucians to Philadelphia and how the city's layout follows esoteric principles, including a direct reference to Bacon's New Atlantis. 
moving into the 1800s and beyond, he reveals how a handful of Rosicrucians served as the inner sanctum of the Knights of the Golden Circle and how Rosicrucians are behind the Georgia Guidestones, carved granite monoliths with messages in ancient languages. Okay, so we got that there. Yes, yes, one FTM. Walt Disney was a noted Rosicrucian. Very good. I was just about to say that. So anyway, uh, so you know where all this comes from, okay? It's always, always, always take our eyes off of God, always. Uh, Christians are even falling for this stuff. You know, oh, the Bible wasn't finally inspired. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Really? Really? You go into Old Testament. It's a foreshadow of everything in the New Testament. But you need eyes to see. That's the thing. Am I saying it's all good? Blah, blah, blah? No. I know there's things where the councils of uh, a scene, I think, was, and they took stuff out, like the Book of Enoch, and there's all kinds of things. You've got to look into the history. But the Word of God is a divine inspiration because if it wasn't, God's big enough to get rid of it. That's the way I look at it. Okay. So Rosicrucians, their logo's a medieval cross with a rose on it. I would have put it up, but I don't like putting up stuff like that. It really bugs me because it's here and it, it shows every time there's like a like a thing on it. I don't like it. Um, it interesting. It's R.C. Christian, Christian after one of the founders of the Rosicrucians and R.C., Rose Cross, Rosie Cross. Um, in the 1990s, uh, the journalist Widener said, he believes that for generations, the Rosicrucians have been passing down knowledge of a solar cycle that climaxes every 13,000 years. During this culmination, outsized coronal mass ejections are supposed to devastate the earth. Now, what does that hearken us back to on the eclipse? NASA. Shooting. Look, you can tie this stuff together. You really can. You just got to do put your thinking cap on and take notes and remind yourself what I spoke about in the last one. It's all, I don't randomly do this stuff. Everything connects, okay? So the coronal ejections that are supposed to devastate the earth. Oh, you mean NASA didn't do what they were supposed to do? Widener believes the organization behind the Guidestones is orchestrating a planetary chaos, which began with the collapse of the U.S. financial system and will result eventually in major disruptions of oil, food supplies, mass riots, ethnic wars, world, world, wars worldwide, all leading up to the big event on December 21st, 2012. Okay, remember that? They want to get the population down, and this is what they think will do it. Obviously, that didn't go as planned. We don't know who God used to stop this plan, but it didn't work. So, of course, they went on to plan B. And that's what we have been in since 2015. We are in plan B, okay? Actually, it could be plan C at this time, or D, because everything they're attempting is being foiled. And we don't know what we don't know. See, we only know what we know. What? Don't we know? My good goodness, the amount of things God saved us from, we have no idea. Now, the second theory, let me give you the second theory, even though I believe that's it. Another theory is that Ted Turner is uh, the mastermind behind the Guidestones. Um, if you don't know who he is, he's a billionaire, huge producer. Uh, he owns TNT, TBS, and of course, CNN. Um, so why him? Big believer in the apocalypse, huge. Uh, he even prepared, listen to this, a one minute long doomsday video that CNN plans to show if we are about to face a an extinction event. He produced it, he has it. 
The video was created in 1980, which happens to be the same year as the Georgia Guidestones was created. The video music that was played on the Titanic when it was sinking that the band played. Final theory, theory number three. It was created by the DS or the C-A-B-A-L, okay? Within our government, who is pushing for an NWO, for the new blank order, okay? Plausible because the group was planning the Guidestones since 1959. Now, let's go back to 1959. Again, let's connect all these dots. The president in 1959 was Dwight D. Eisenhower. His final speech before leaving the White House, he warned us about a rogue group within the government. And this is what he said. I'm quoting him. In the councils of government, sounds a little bit like JFK coming up. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex, the potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and it will persist. You have to go back and listen to that again because there's a lot of stuff in there. So don't put your trust in people that that probably will not be able to hold that trust, okay? But two months before the Guidestones were blown up, Candace Taylor, who ran for government in Georgia, said this, quote, I am the only candidate bold enough to stand up to the Luciferian cabal. Hope that doesn't me. Elect me governor of Georgia and I will bring the satanic regime to its knees and demolish the Georgia Guidestones. That was two months before. Do I think she did it? No. I think she was just prophetic and, and speaking what all of us wanted to speak. Three hours after they were blown up, Candace Taylor tweeted, God is God all by himself. He can do anything he wants to do, which includes striking down the satanic guidestones. That doesn't make her, that doesn't make her or anyone else who hated this monument guilty. So what do I think? Well, this is conjecture, but you know, I base it on fact, verification, putting two and two together putting all the, lining up the dots. I think there wasn't any suspects or investigations. Could it have been an act of God? Absolutely. And maybe that's why they didn't want, they had nowhere to go. I don't know. That I don't know. But at this point, let me go through this. There wasn't any suspects or, or investigations. There wasn't anyone who saw anything or anyone, even though the whole line behind the Georgia Guidestones were homes. There wasn't any video recording, even though it was videoed, even though there was video security around the Guidestones. This investigation was just swept under the rug and they were never rebuilt. OK, so you could say, well, it's a lot to rebuild all the guide stones and, you know, you know, with the group want to come forward again and go to the I mean, he's a, he's alive, you know, and go to him and say, I need the, it wasn't the whole thing. Let me show you. That's all that was destroyed was one. The uh, in, a, in part of the cover of it. That. So they knocked down all of it for one? Something, something's going on here, okay? So, so there's one of the reasons I believe the good guys are a lot more in control than we see with our natural eye. Also, what's very interesting about all of this is that 
the North Star Polaris. Let me just show you here. See, they use this on the guide stones. That's a calendar. Okay, each day of the year it follows the sun. All right. And here is um, the hole that if you look through that hole, any time of day, if you if it's a little bit darker and or the you know sun's going down or whatever it is, you can see Polaris through that hole. But how can Polaris be through that hole? Now people are going to say, oh well, P Polaris is like in one spot. But with us flying around the sun and at six hundred and it's sixty six thousand six hundred miles an hour and and in 24 hours and we're flying around we're rotating at a thousand miles an hour how can polaris be in the exact same spot so this is my question not a question to you guys but just a an observation if that can be seen every minute of the day through that hole and every night whether it's four o'clock when it's dark early or when it's two in the morning or where, how can that be if the earth is not a plane? Just a thought, just a thought to me. See, I add all these things up. That's how I get to where I get. Now, I do not understand why the guide stones were tumbled. That is an absolute anomaly to me put that one back up why why would the rest knock down why did georgia knock the rest down why did that happen who ordered that why didn't they just leave that up if it's such an incredible monument why don't doesn't anyone go there anymore there's no more chanting people don't show up on the land it's gone completely when Stonehenge survived 5,000 years, even though some were knocked down, others were destroyed, but not this. This got completely destroyed. You know what I think? I think it's prophetic. Whether God did it, man did it, uh, uh, I don't know. Angels did it. Gabriel did it. Michael, I don't know who. But I know this. That sucker got taken down and to me it is the most one of the most prophetic signs that we won not only we won we are in so much in the process of winning that we have we're looking at it like this oh this is happening let me look over here oh no that's happening oh no you know mr t in new york oh look what's happening to him guys get a little bit higher as I was talking about Wednesday, go talk, go learn about it. You got to get God's perspective. You got to get the ascended vision. You got to look at things like he's looking at them. It's not just one thing, one thing, one thing, one thing. It's not. It's the whole thing. It's like I started a month and a half ago doing off the cuff. I started talking about cognitive dissonance, okay? I layered, if you go back, I layered one thing upon the other upon the other. This, to me, I could have done this a while back, but I couldn't. This, to me, is the one interesting thing that I, I cannot get out of my spirit, that this is a prophetic declaration just like they were making a prophetic declaration. We destroyed that declaration. Now there's nothing there but God's good earth. That is what I believe the Georgia Guidestones are. Now I'll take your questions. Don't have too much longer, but I got 10 minutes. So question mark, question mark, question mark, please. And then the question on this subject only again, I'm not an expert on every single thing. I only know what I know. I know what I'm shown. I'm human. I make mistakes. You can disagree. It's okay. This channel, you will not be shown, thrown off if you disagree with me. Okay. 
Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, it sure seems to me a huge story about our past. We're not privileged to it. Like George Carlin said, it's a big club and you ain't in it. Will we ever know the truth? All of it? Uh, Tynus? Probably not. Not on this side of heaven. Not on this side of heaven. But I believe we're going to know a lot. Could the placement of these stones uh, be attached to a demonic frequency or portal of some sort? Absolutely. I'll tell you what else, get her done. And I didn't have time to do it, but you, you might want to go down it. Who owned the land that it's on? I just, you know, I only have so much time. I can't spend 20 hours on this, but I spent a lot of time going down this. But as you can tell, but if you check the, the where you should go now, if you're interested in this, is, is now go back. Who owned the land? Who owned the land? And it's in public records. Who owned the land before that person? What did they use it for? Was it a burial ground? Who buried it there? How does it line up in Georgia? Is it, clo is, is it a, a, a radius to certain things that are demonic? That's, that's what you do. If you do that, you're going to find a lot of answers. Um, uh, Betty, from what I can see... Uh, many of them had their hand in Rasasaria, Asafirian, not recipe. I can never pronounce this. It's the most incredible thing. I've been talking about it for how long? And I cannot. So let me just Rosicrucian. Okay, Ros Rosicrucian. Um, George Washington, it says he was an Anglican. Now, is Anglican and Rosicrucian the same? Mm, possibly. Uh, I don't know, Betty, but uh, even says Abraham Lincoln, a lot of people, a lot of people. Um, do you see in the spirit to know your feeling on the storms? I can feel and smell some weird. Um, I, I can't go down that road right now, Molly, but a great, great question for some time when I go down that road, because uh, that'll take me down a whole nother thing. Uh, was the first stone taken out by lightning or DW? I don't know. Um, I don't know, RC. I don't know. Could have been a DW on our side. Could have been uh, lightning, obviously. Uh, natural? Never. Never. Uh, what I want to know and I could not find is what stone if anyone finds this, please send me the information at ddgathering at gmail.com. What specific one of the stones was the one that was taken out? Another another hole to go down and, and figure it out. But it also could have, could have been destroyed by someone. Um, and I'll tell you something, as much as we like to think that, oh, God took it out with lightning, I actually would rather have it find out that it was someone that was hired to do that by the good guys. That's what I would prefer because then I know why the whole thing was demolished and man, that says it all. Um, okay. Uh, wasn't the land high ground in Georgia? I don't know uh, what that means, high ground in Georgia. Maybe you can explain it to me for a bit. I don't know what that means. Um, are there any modern monuments similar to Georgia Guidestones? Ton of them. And there's obelisks popping up around the world. Another show. Yes, there are. Yes, there are. Um, you can look up the obelisks that are popping up. It's very interesting. Uh, where did they dispose of these stones? Uh, free to dream? No clue. I looked it up. Couldn't find it. Couldn't find it anywhere. Very interesting. My Annie Ashton, my grandson and I during homeschool yesterday renamed Earth Day as God's Day of Creation celebration with Psalm 8 as our basis. Could this be prophetic? I believe it. I believe it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Wow, Annie. That's amazing. God bless you. Your, your, your grandson is going to be part of the solution and not the problem. Um, okay. Uh, Brendan Huston, what did they do with the materials destroyed or reused? Are they demonic? Um, I personally, I would have taken them all, crushed it, put it in the form of a big cross and stuck it right there. 
And I'll tell you what that reminds me of. When we, in 2006, and we ended up with Kim at the same, in Hollywood, at the same time, one week apart, uh, we didn't know he was moving there. Then it was like this, and we were like that. God said to go. He left Dallas, we left New York. When we got there, we ended up in the Valley in, in Studio City. He en ended up not too far from us. He had, uh, a few months later, he wanted to find a place in Hollywood that he would have his meetings. And wouldn't you know, there was a former porn uh, uh, publication warehouse that he leased to have his meetings. It was awesome. It was awesome, man. We cleaned that place out spiritually. It was great. You know, they, we showed up with meetings. They, those devils were on the run. That's what I would have done. That's what I would have grown though, grind those down. I would have put up a crust. I thought the rest of the stones were taken down by a machine. No, the rest of the stones were taken down by a backhoe. Buffy was by a backhoe. If that's what you mean by a machine. Yes, it was. Yeah. But who, who ordered it and who, wh why, why? Okay, what stone was taken out? What did it say? That's that's what I want to find out. I couldn't find out. I couldn't find it anywhere, Bonnie. I couldn't find it anywhere. That's an, an excellent question. And who owned the land? Both of those. Who were first people there to see if something was buried underneath? Uh, the 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 uh, free to dream. The people who the the state ordered them to be taken down. They said they were dangerous. I don't understand that. I mean, how can they be dangerous? It was just that one. Just take that away. See, it doesn't make sense. Well, and it could withstand a, a, a cataclysmic event, which is very all very interesting. So, uh, the people that were there were was the state that brought in a backhoe, and a bulldozer, and everything, and trucks, and they dug down eight feet, and there was nothing there. The land wasn't disturbed. It was dirt exactly where they said it would buried here under this. And there was nothing there. Or they said there was nothing there. and They did not want to reveal what it was. I don't know. Um, are you familiar with Sheila homework about the stones? Much info on it. Uh, I'm not, although I know Sheila, but I, as I've said before to many people, I really don't watch anyone else ever. Because I, I like to hear from God myself. I like to do my own work. I don't go on places and just take like, oh, I'll take that and I'll take that. That's not what I do. So, uh, you know, maybe some of the things I said, she said, or some other people, but that's because we all both, uh, you know, we all dig. Um, the stones are probably at the Smithsonian. Ah, bless you. LOL. That's an LOL. Yeah. Never know. Oh, I'm sorry. What were the other languages on the stones? Hang on. I skipped stuff. I skipped it because I was dying to get to, uh, hang on and I'll give it to you. I have it here. Oh my goodness. Did I not? Did I not? I had so much information, guys. Okay. So what it was, if I believe it was, um, it was obviously English, um, Sanskrit, Russian, Hebrew, Swahili, um, uh, Egyptian hieroglyphics. Um, and I think there was one more. I'm so sorry. You can get it online, though. You can find that online. Um, I obviously, when I was cutting and pasting things to put in, I I, I deleted it. Oh. You know, you know how that goes. Um, okay. Have you seen the video footage of the destruction? It really looks like an angel. April, I have. Um, let me tell you. Let me tell you what I think about that. It, you, you can look at it that way. But see, if because our eyes are looking for that, we would see that. If... An atheist friend of mine looked at it. Would he see an angel? 
And that's why I, I'm a critical thinker. I would love it to be an angel, but to me, it looked like it was a bomb. A bomb blew it up. That's what it looks like to me. I could be wrong, but that's what it looks like to me. Now, if it was an angel, I wish it would um, would have really, you know, made itself manifest because then everybody would have seen it. But, you know, God's a God of secrets. It's a God of secrets. Um Latitude and longitude, how do you meaning for the location? Do you, do you look that up too? Yeah, uh, I did. But, you know, that's a whole road that I would have to go down and I didn't want to go down it for many reasons, Liana. Yeah, yeah. The location was very, uh, very, very interesting. More interesting to me is even of where it was on the earth because uh, R.C. Christian did say there were other sites but the reason he wanted um, here is because of the beautiful granite work that these people did. Uh, Tim Schatzer is the relation between the guide stones and the monoliths. I don't know. You mean a Stonehenge? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What's interesting is the obelisks that start are start popping up, whatever they call them. They look like an obelisk to me. Um, it happened after the destruction of the Georgia Guidestones. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, maybe, maybe we could gather there, anoint the ground, pray, and take it back for the Lord. I believe it's already taken back. I really do. I believe Christians that are in that area did it. I don't, I don't believe that. I believe that we are, we are a, a, a sleeping giant, okay? Because we don't know and we're not all vocal, uh, the... Let me tell you something. People don't stand for it. I know people that go to places and march seven times like uh, 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 Joshua did and uh, around buildings. And people do a lot. Believe me, they do a lot. Um, okay, that one. All right, all right. Um, okay, I think that's it. Uh, let me see. Okay. I think I heard something that Georgia guides was strategically placed exactly 666 miles from the United Nations. Wow. That would be very, very interesting. Can somebody quickly look that up? See if Elberton, Georgia is 666 miles away from New York or the United Nations is. Wow. Angel footage is fake. Okay. Yeah. That's what someone just said. That's why you got to be careful. Um, uh, let's say, I believe the destruction was uh, caused by a DW. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, it could have very well been uh, of us from us. You know, we look all these things, we go, Oh, DWs are bad, but we have the good guys have them too. You know, we have, we have a lot of the same stuff. Um, okay. I think, is that it? Good guys. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's what I, yeah. That's what I just said, master, a good guy using a DW. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. If I had to, if someone said to me, you must pick one, that's probably what I would pick. It did look like a bomb or something, but you know, maybe that was just the way I was looking at it. You know, sometimes we see, what we want to see. Got to be real careful. Have you read about the obelisks that are being found in the blood of the Jeb? I have not. I have not. Um, I believe that these stones are one of the 34 satanic sites we brought down by the rods of God. What say you, Delora? Could be. Could be. Uh, if you believe that, uh, what I would do is I would find um, information that backs up what you say. If you can't find the information that verifies what you say, then it's probably not it. Do you know how many things I thought were one thing and I ended up finding out they were another because I went down the road and verified? You know. Uh, okay, here's my theory. Uh, God blew up Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, but I, yeah, I mean, I, you don't know. You, you just don't, we don't know at this time. I, look, for me... Um, 
uh, hold on. If God had done it, it would have been obliterated. That's what I think, Kim. You're, you're reading my mind here. I almost uh, I almost said that because this one above you says, uh, Gail says, uh, it could be the guy, good guys have control of DW, is not the cabal. Well, the only problem with that, of Gail, of them not having is Lahaina and Hawaii. You understand? That was DEWs. And I don't think our government, uh, uh, well, our government could have done it. I don't think the good guys did it. Um, okay. I think that's it. Um, I, look, I, guys, I just, I, I love this topic. If you, and I mean this, um, yeah, if you, anyone found it. Oh, okay. Here it is. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Rico, uh, it's 783 and a half miles. So that's not true. You see how you have to verify this stuff? Cause really I could have put that up on you know, Georgia Guidestone, 666 miles away from the United Nations. And it would have been clickbait all over the place. This is why you got to be really careful who you believe, who you listen to. Don't believe everything you hear. I could tell you anything. Very, very important. All right. So tonight on Rumble, Doubleheader Friday, Fab Four. Go over to Rumble. Subscribe over there. Sunday night, continuation of Wednesday on Rumble Channel as well, both nights at 6 p.m. Okay, born to be wild top. Short sleeves, awesome, stretchy, stretchy, hides all your lasagna. I love that. And uh, day, to, uh, day to night, cozy cardigan, gorgeous spring cardigan in the description and in Dolores' closet on joyandcountry.com. Also, don't forget, 20% off, 20 until Sunday night at midnight. And you can even look at the Mother's Day collection. Uh, you'll get it uh, in time for Mother's Day. Yes, you will. Uh, she said we also add another lot of clearance items up to 65% off on clearance items and you can add the extra 20%. So that's up to 85% off. Love you guys. Love you. Love you. I will see you tonight, uh, Monday, um, debating. I might go down the road of uh, secret societies. I'm a little hesitant, but I might just uh, throw caution to the wind and do it all. So I'm going over to joincountry.com. See what she put over there. Join me for 20% off Mother's Day. Love you. Oh, free shipping too. Do not forget that. Love you, love you, love you guys. Thank you all for joining me. Thank you for the support. Remember... All day, all weekend, all your life, go in the power of God. Ciao for now. See you tonight.